Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode. It's been a while since we've done some uh, posts, and I apologize for that. But hey, we're back from the 4th of July. We've had a nice little week off, and everybody's ready to go back to doing whatever they do, right? I had a couple folks ask me questions about the grid support presets option in Leechy over the last week or so, not only on YouTube, but on Discord. A few folks had just popped up and said, hey, you mentioned using a particular type of preset but I don't see that preset in my lychee. Am I missing something? Oh, well, essentially, no, you're not missing anything. I did an episode a couple of weeks back where we talked about the grid support and variably just kind of went over how it worked. And I really didn't discuss it in detail, but I did mention the fact that there was a way to create your own presets. You can edit the current ones that are there and you can create your own presets based on whatever preferences. Now, I don't recommend doing this out of the box because... First of all, you don't, I'm assuming you don't, you don't probably know more than the folks at Lychee, and I'm sure that they have their own reasonings for setting up the presets the way they do. Now, if you want to create a custom preset based on your style of supporting and you already know it works, grand. I've kind of started doing the same thing with some of my supports and setups and bracing supports, so I'm going to show you all in this video how we go about doing that, and that all starts with supporting a character because the system won't let you start doing it until you actually start you know having a supported character with some supports on it and then it's going to allow you to create or edit or add a bracing system or structure support so let's get into it i'll go through the basics of how the grid and the support system works uh, i'll show you on two minis that, that we have uh set up and ready to go and uh we'll go over it from there and um hopefully this will answer some of the questions on how to create the presets and this might educate some of you on maybe you didn't even know you could make presets. And if you don't currently use the grid support system, I'm going to currently say that it is, it's working great for me. It's been a fantastic, first of all, resin saver because it's much more efficient on bracings uh, as far as the size and control. Uh, and it's been a wonderful way to support the figures that I use there. The supporting comes off even easier. Uh, the bracings make the miniature supports even stronger. And so overall, it has been a wonderful feature addition to the software. If you're not using it, highly recommend you try it. It's just one more reason to use Lychee and Lychee Pro to get all those fantastic features. Uh, anyway, let's cut right into the episode and I'll show you all the uh, tricks and tips here that I can show you for the grid support system and how to create your own and refine your own presets. Here we go. All right. So here we are looking at some uh, models that we have here. These are uh, Crippled God Foundry models. Some of my favorite D&D uh, models come from these guys. Some of our customers really, really enjoy these sculpts as well, especially when we paint them. Uh, they, uh, they're really detailed. They're nice and uh, stylized. Always fun to work on. But uh, we're not really here to talk about the models. We're here to talk about the structure and the grid system. So... A couple of weeks ago, we did basic episode and I discussed how the grid system worked. Basically, we went over the fundamentals of it and essentially just how to place a grid. Now, in order to do this, in order to create a preset or have a preset or use a preset, you need to have a model that's already supported like this. It doesn't need to have any bracings. It just needs to be supported, at least to some extent. It doesn't need to be finished. I mean probably best that you finish it first before you do all the bracings anyway. But this is a really nice way of doing auto bracings for those of you that had some complaints about the auto bracing system from the previous version of Lychee. Personally, I never had any complaints, but this is a massive improvement over it. It gives you a lot more functionality, uh, gives you more editability and preset ability. You have a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, there's some limitations, like I found that going to a certain length on your grid size will will completely break it. Uh, but you you still have a lot of options when it comes to, you know, how you're going to make the bracings and how you want that to work. Uh, and so essentially what I've done here is I've mostly supported this. I've gone over the islands and then I've kind of left them here. 
So what we would do from here is, and I'm going to do, he's going to be graded up a little bit different than him just because he's got all this flowy cape stuff behind him. And this dude's got this arrow back here that I'm concerned about. So I might do a lower setting for one than the other one because the cape's kind of thick. Don't think I'm worried about it breaking, but this guy's arrow and that for sure, definitely worried about that breaking. So we want to be careful. So let me go ahead and select him. Uh, actually, wait, let me let me check to make sure we don't have any proximity errors first. No, we don't. How about you? No. Okay, good. So let's go to him first. We're going to go over to structure. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and take a look at. Now, I've got a bunch of presets here that I've made. Um, and I've got the default one. Small, tall, strong, default. Those are the four defaults. Now, if we were just to say, I'll just use small object bracing. And we click add update this will create bracings that are pretty well suited for miniatures but we're not here to do that we're here to show you how to mess with it now if you wanted to you could go into small object bracing and you could edit it this actually allows you to change all the parameters here to whatever you choose um, now, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you there's a few I don't touch. Gap, I don't mess with. I, I keep the gap at zero because I don't like there to be too much of a gap unless there has to be due to, like, you know, things getting in the way. Um, the bottom starts, I always keep it at one millimeter. The, I think for a one model, I actually put it down to um, zero just because I wanted to see what would happen. They will connect directly to the raft. Doesn't seem to make too much of a difference, but they, they just start at the very bottom instead of starting a millimeter up. That's the only difference. Your diameter is the diameter of the bracing bar itself. And your first reinforcement is the... Um, essentially, it's like the distance of a reinforcement that's added on its own versus the second reinforcement. So it's like it judges where to add the second first kind of thing. Um, and that's based on you know, height. So the distance between this and this essentially is 30 millimeter, or sorry, um, 10 millimeters. Whereas the second, re it, it, it's a little confusing. I don't mess with that setting at all. Uh, you can increase this if you want to. It's very strange how this might, it, it doesn't seem to do much when I've played with it. Uh, but I think this is more for um, like when you have a, a little bit larger of a grid gap, which we don't have. So I'm going to set these back to uh, 10 and 30, which are the defaults. So we'll just leave those alone. Then you have this down here, which is your grid bracing reinforcement, which is either diagonal or double diagonal or no diagonal. Or sorry, simple or double or no. And if you do double, You'll notice this creates cross bracings as well as bracing sides. So you have these lateral bracings, and then you have these cross bracings that are going backwards. Um, again, for a miniature, nah, you don't need that. Maybe simple if you wanted to be a little bit extra cautious, but you don't you don't need it. And you can see this there's a difference between those three settings. And then we would simply just save and apply, and that would apply the bracings to that model. Now, we take a look at this dude. I'm going to show you all how to make a new one since I just showed you the editing process. So we scroll down to the very bottom of the uh, bracings menu here, and we just say add new preset. Now, I'm just going to name this my mini. And we'll click OK. And here's our model. And again, it starts with the same defaults we just saw on small uh, small object, right? So let's tweak them. Now for him, his, this cape back here, it's a bit flowy, right? It's got this little curve going on. These little lines will probably create a small amount of suction in here. And it's also, it's, it's, it's this curves. Curves are always the chance to pull. So what I'll do in this area is, you know, because he's got this cape, I'm actually going to increase this a little bit. And you'll see how much thicker 
those bracings are to keep, and that'll keep that more stable uh, in that area. Now that seems like it's a lot for a little miniature model, and yeah, it's a bit stronger than I would normally use. But again, I, the reasoning is the cape there, and you know, just the orientation of that kind of part moving, you know, together with everything else. I think it's important to make sure that gets supported properly. Now you can make them smaller. You can see how much smaller they can get. Uh, you can make them really small if you want to. I mean, obviously, I don't recommend making them too small because they're not going to really offer much in the way of help. And then, of course, you can make them just as thick as the bar themselves. But that's kind of the way the old default bracing system used to work. So uh, really don't want to go there. So anyway, the, one of the other options you can do if you don't want to upgrade the bar too much, because they do, they will, it'll get thick and it's going to get really hard to um, clip those and break those away. Uh, you can actually use this diagonal system, but I don't really recommend double. I would do the simple and it'll just put some extra supports down here and give you this nice little structure at the bottom. I think one of the greatest things about this is it really makes the model look very clean. The supporting is very clean. It's very well done. It looks nice. And so often when I, I will work on these, it literally looks like I've spent hours making these little braces in here. But their new bracing system in this is just fantastic. And again, this was released with 6.0. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who have not seen that feature yet, I highly recommend checking it out. It will save you resin. It will save you time. And it's definitely going to help you get better supporting. Because it's a lot better than the original default um, bracing. And I'll show you. <clears throat> if we parent this guy again, this is what the default used to look like. Yeah, it's kind of like all over the place. I mean, it still puts this, you know, box structure on the bottom, but it's just everywhere. <clears throat> To me, it was very chaotic. It did work, but I, I don't like it as much as the new system. The new system seems, in my opinion, seems to be a lot better. Now, it's even cooler is if you already have a model that's been supported and braced, you can technically bring that model in to the new lychee and you can apply the new style of bracings. That is an option. Anyway, with that, that is actually pretty much it. Um, so again, you're going to want to go to your prepare tab, your structure tab, and that is where you're going to find this menu. Now, if you want to get full use out of it, you're going to turn that snap to grid, snap on grid on. And then <clears throat> when you're ready to start creating your presets, you're going to go down here to this menu. And you can either tweak one of theirs or you can completely add your own and experiment. See what works best for your type of models and what you're currently working on. And uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think of the grid system if you have used it. And if not, let me know if you, uh, you know, you do get a chance to and what your thoughts are. Thanks so much again for watching another episode. We really appreciate the viewers. Uh, we've reached about 1,400 subscribers so far on the channel, and we appreciate each and every one of you so very much. You have no idea. We're hoping to continue to grow the channel and the print uh, business thing much more as much as we can over the next couple of months. Um, we're planning on doing some more conventions next year, although we pretty much stalled out on them for this year, um, just based on availability and you know just kind of the options we have in our area. But we are looking into some other ones. So for those of you that have seen us at the cons and events and the grimoires and everything that we've attended, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for saying hi. And again, you know, for all of those who haven't had a chance, we hope that maybe one day we'll be in your city. Who knows? Uh, but again, I hope that this uh, episode was informative about the grid system, how to set up your presets, how to edit them, things like that. And I hope that y'all get some use out of it. 
And if not, well, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sure we'll have an episode in the future that'll suit something that you're probably looking for. Maybe anti-aliasing again? No, no, no. I'm, I'm kidding. I've already covered that like nine times. Anyway, thanks for watching again, folks. We'll see you all soon.